Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Izmi Zara and today I want to talk about something that has actually been on my mind for the longest time, right? This is like a very popular topic in the sense that there are a lot of people that can relate to what I'm about to talk about. You go on Instagram, every single person you're seeing has learnt a new recipe or just graduated from uni or just got into uni or has bought a car or is getting married or has had a child and you're just looking at your life like why do I suck? <laughs> why don't I have anything to show for why I am alive? And it can make you in your real life feel like absolute crap. And I completely understand because I used to feel that way. I was someone who used to be very insecure, very envious, especially of other girls, other women. And I'm comparing myself to someone else because I'm like, oh, she got engaged before me. Or, oh, it looks like this is happening in this person's life and not happening in my life. And it can lead you to really start to feel like you are a loser. <laughs> so, without wasting any much more time, Let's jump into five ways that you can overcome jealousy and comparison. So the first thing I would say is admit to yourself what you are feeling and try and narrow it down to why am I feeling this way. Usually when you do that, you will find out that that person's picture, post, news, even if it's your friend that calls you to say, hey, I just got engaged, is communicating something that you probably already feel about your own life. For instance, if you feel that there's not enough progress happening in your life, and then you come on Instagram, for example, and you see this particular girl that seems like her life is perfect. Just yesterday, she graduated from uni. Then she was doing another post about a six-figure tech job that she just got. Then the next thing, she has a boyfriend. And then the next thing, she's engaged. Before you can say Jack Robinson, she's married. Whilst still you've been living in your father's house since you left school. You've not been able to get a job anywhere. You are so upset. And then you see this girl's picture and you roll your eyes and you're just like, Why does it seem like every good thing is happening to this guy? You're upset, you're jealous, you're angry at God sometimes. Now, the problem is not really the person that their life is supposedly looking good. It's that you're already feeling a particular kind of way about your own life. So the first thing you need to do is to admit to yourself what is this particular picture making me feel? Why am I feeling this way? When I and my husband were planning to get married, things were not moving as fast as I wanted it to. Even though I got married very young, there was still this restlessness and dissatisfaction that things were not moving at the speed that I wanted. And I remember that there was this particular girl I was following who was around my age range or my age group. And I saw when she started dating a particular guy and in like a couple of months, they were engaged. And before I could even look left or right, they were at the altar. And I remember just feeling so upset in that, in that particular season that why isn't mine happening as fast as this other person's own is happening? This example I just painted shows that there was already something that was happening with me before I saw the girl's picture. So really, really try to narrow down why a particular picture, why a particular news is making you feel that kind of way. Once you can do that, you will find that you will automatically root out envy, jealousy, and have to now deal with the real thing that is staring you in the face, which is why you are feeling that way. And this brings me to my next point. Get off social media and focus on your real life. The reason why a lot of people are jealous and envious and compare themselves to people online is that the people that you are comparing yourself to have an actual life outside of social media. Their entire life is not lived on social media. There are two kinds of people on social media. They are the creators and they are the consumers. Inadvertently, all of us fit these two boxes at different points in time. We are both creators and we are both consumers. But I try to lean more on the creator side than on the consumer side. This way, I am in real life thinking of what I can do to create, to share, that can help and bless people. That way, to someone else who is looking from the other side, who is consuming this creator's content. It can look like, wow, this person has such a fabulous life, but no, it's really that 
of social media i am working on my real life so it's really just for you to say okay i'm only going to spend one hour of social media at the most in the mornings and one hour of social media at most in the night and then throughout the day sit down and ask yourself what can i actually do to be useful to be productive with the life that god has given me this was something that i did not used to do before i used to check my phone almost every 30 minutes almost every 45 minutes feeling like oh my goodness something may have happened that i have missed out on <laughs> you know i had to really train myself to say this phone i'm going to put it down and i'm instead going to sit at my desk and ask myself who do i want to be in 20 years and start being that person now so i find that because i'm so busy working on my own life i don't really have the time to focus on what other people are doing or to be like oh look at what this girl is doing or oh look at what that guy is doing or look at what they have you know achieved i am literally on my own lane building and i am content because i know that eventually i will get to that place that i have set before me the third thing i will say is redefine what success means to you you have to get a very personal definition of what success is. And for me, success is my ability to every day live out what God has written for me. Which means that if I come online and I see someone today who let's say has bought a Range Rover, I'm not touched, I really don't care. And that is because to me, a Range Rover is not a sign of success. I'm using an iPhone 7 Plus and I've been using this phone for three and a half years going to I think almost four years and I really don't care I see people who come online they have the iPhone 12 this is not to shade anyone they have the iPhone 12 or they have the iPhone 11 I'm not moved by any any of those things because I have redefined what success means to me and every day I'm able to have joy I'm able to even celebrate other people who are who are having good things happen to them when I was getting married as well I wasn't crazy about making a, a wedding dress with the most famous person or trying on or getting married in a, in a um, pricey hall because I, I don't have anything to prove to anyone and I actually don't care. I feel like I've said this so many times but I actually don't care. So I early learned how to redefine what success means and since i have my own definition of success when i see other people celebrating their own definition of success i'm able to be happy for them i don't compare myself to them because they are not on the same lane that i am on and this kind of brings me to the fourth thing which is that you have to choose to be content and happy with the life that you have it is very hard to do this initially but the more you do it the easier it gets you have to actually choose every single day to be happy and content there is a scripture that talks about how we brought nothing into this world and so we'll take nothing out of it and also speaks about how godliness with contentment is great is great gain to be honest that was the scripture that actually started to change things for me i started to say okay i know who god has shown me that i'm going to be there is no need to despise where i currently am is part of the process of who God is making me. And so I learned how to be content. I did a video talking about how I'm okay with a seemingly boring life. I don't care to clutter my life with things, whether to prove anything to anyone or to deceive myself into thinking that the way the world says I should live and have fun and exist is how I should do it. I have really taken control of my life and handed it to God and said, God, I am giving you this life of mine to do whatever you want, to define what, what the parameters of my life should be. And I trust you because you are wise, you are good, you are loving, that whatever you say is good for me. And so I am content with, with, with the life that I have. I am content living in the house that I live in. I am content being married to the man that I'm married to. No matter who I meet, if I go outside of my house, I'm never going to be swayed by whatever that, that um, person has. Because for me, like I said earlier, success is not necessarily about money. I have already come to terms with the fact that there is no amount of money I will ever have in this life that will be enough. For me so i cannot lose my mind over money money will come money will go i cannot lose my mind over material possessions because i brought nothing into this world and i'm going to take nothing with me when i leave instead i learn how to 
find fulfillment in other things like in helping people inspiring a whole generation of people to live meaningfully for me these are the things that have been able to help me not look at other people and compare myself to them i have basically carved out a lane for myself that i am moving on and i'm too busy on it to look left or look right or to compare my journey to someone else's the last thing i will say is take your eyes off of yourself and learn how to celebrate others and celebrate their success because of the kind of world that we live in and amplified by the social media age we tend to be very self-absorbed and i'm talking about myself as well i have to literally over and over tell myself that i have to detach from this world it's something that i consciously remind myself to do and i learned how to celebrate other people's success for instance there's a girl that i love so much she is a very popular youtuber she's also a friend of mine and i remember when she started putting out youtube video this was years ago i used to watch those videos and then i became a creator myself and i found myself you know comparing my views to her views her engagement to my engagement i started becoming upset sad i remember that there was a particular video she did that started to go viral and when i watched it i was actually so upset not at her but just like like i was saying initially that feeling of jealousy sadness whatever is trying to communicate something that you're already feeling about yourself and I realized that I felt that my life was not moving at the pace that I wanted it to, that people were not recognizing my own work and were instead fawning over this other girl. Meanwhile, we were both doing kingdom work. And I remember I was lying down on the bed and I said, Holy Spirit, I don't want to feel this way. Why do I feel this way? And he said, reach out to her tell her what an amazing job she's doing but before you do that pray for her pray for her youtube pray for her ministry that she'll have even much more success and i did that i prayed for her i said god i pray that this girl will have much more success she will have much more views i have videos that all of her videos will go viral and god actually answered that prayer because at the time i was watching that video I think she was having about 100,000 views. I think after I prayed that she had about 600,000 views. And I was happy for her. I didn't... I, I I didn't feel jealous anymore. I felt like this is my sister. This is my co-partner in this work of God that I'm doing. And I remember I reached out to her and I said, hey, you know, I was feeling this particular kind of way, but I've prayed for you and I'm rooting for you. And after that, God even started to speak to me about her, give me dreams. I became a personal intercessor for this person. So I learned how to celebrate her. I learned how to be happy for her. And by extension, I've just learned how to be happy for other people. Honestly, God sees my heart. There is nobody that I am jealous or envious of. There is nobody's life that I want. I am so satisfied with the life that I have. And it's not that I'm perfect. It was that it took, it was a journey to get here, but I was committed to that journey. I was committed to saying this life that God has given me, I will own it. I will be satisfied with it. I will not look to the left or to the right. I will delight in every single thing that God is doing in my life. And I will just, I like, I have made up my mind that I'm going to have a blast. And there is no way you can actually enjoy the life that God has given you if you're envious of other people. Remember that the sky is big enough to accommodate all the birds all the birds in the world no one is bumping into each other or just each other there is space for you in this world one person's success doesn't mean your failure there is room for you to expand to grow to evolve to become you can be a creator if you want to you can share in the characteristics of the one that made you you don't have to feel like oh well there are already too many people you know in this space i don't think there's any need for me to come the world is waiting for your voice is waiting for you even when it comes to ministry there is a kind of worship that only you can offer god no other person can do it and god is counting on you to do that so i hope this video was helpful as usual i hope it was fun if it was be sure to share it with people you know that this is going to encourage and i will see you all in my next video mwah, mwah, mwah. Mm -hmm.